Hello, that was Virginia Hall by Rusugi Rajasaga. This is the C1 piece of the ABRSM Piano Grade 1 exam pieces for 2023 to 2024. This is a suspenseful piece in 4-4 time, going at a moderate pace at crotchets equals 112 to 126. Now this means that the speed can be slightly faster or slower as long as we keep a consistent pace throughout the piece. With the speed at 112, And with the speed at 126. There are no sharps or flats in the key signature, although there are quite a few accidentals in the piece, such as the A flat and the C sharp and B flat. So remember if you see a sharp, you are playing a semitone higher. For example, the C note goes a semitone higher to the C sharp. And if you see a flat, you're playing a semitone lower. So for example, the B goes to the B flat. There are five four bar phrases here, each with essentially the same accompaniment. The first phrase, we only have the right hand and we're introduced to the accompaniment, which is used throughout the piece. Now this is all in quavers and there are some rests in the middle so it can be a bit tricky to count in crotches initially. So let's break it down and count in quavers first. Rhythmically the first two bars are the same with a quaver rest on the third beat, so the fifth quaver, and on the last and beat, the eighth quaver. So let's count in quavers, going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Bar three, we only have to rest on the third beat. So again, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And on bar four, we are only concerned with the right hand, so the first two beats only, and they're all quavers. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So putting all of that together, counting in quavers. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 1 and 2 and. Now that we have gotten that, we need to start counting in crotchets. Because of the speed we're going at doesn't really allow us to count in quavers when we're playing. Remember that a crotchet is made from two quavers, so we need to bear that in mind as well as keeping our speed consistent throughout the piece. So count in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So with the quaver rest on the beat, you can hear me count and then play. Another couple more things to note. We are starting off the piece in piano, so we are fairly quiet. We have staccatos on all of the notes here, so we need to be a bit light and a bit jumpy. So if we're doing the scato, compared if we're not doing the scato, it sounds not as mysterious that we need to be for this piece. We have a crescendo and decrescendo towards the end of the phrase, getting louder and quieter in the last four beats of the phrase. So one more time for the entire phrase, bar one to four.
phrase two actually starts from the third beat of the fourth bar. Now we call these upbeat quavers because the phrase starts before the beat on the bar. We have the left hand playing three quavers on the D, F and G note. Then a semi-brief A flat with our second finger on bar five. So we have a little crossover from the thumb with a second finger. Coming back down from the A flat, we have another semi brief this time the G note back onto our thumb. Now this means that when we cross over the second finger, we need to keep the thumb position so we don't lose it when we're doing the crossover. Notice that even though I'm not pressing, my thumb is still being crossed over by the second finger and not over here. Following the semi-brief G note, we have a quaver F note and then three D notes which are tied together. There are a dotted crotchet, which is one beat plus half a beat, and then two minims, which are two beats each. So we have a total of five and a half beat on the D note. Let's put all of that when we are counting. So in crotchets, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two Three, four, one, two. If you have mastered the accompaniment from the first phrase, you can use it to help you count for the left hand, as the only beat that is a bit complicated is in bar 7. Bar 4 has the same rhythm as bar 3, just that it is being split between the left hand and the right hand. So going from bar 4 for both hands. The final thing to talk about here is the dynamics. We start off in piano, P, soft, from the first phrase, crescendoing on the three quaver upbeat in bar 4 to get to a mezzo forte, MF, mediumly loud, in bar 5. Now we're going to keep that until we get to halfway of bar 7, where we get a hairpin telling us to get quieter until we're in piano again. The third phrase from the upbeat to bar 9 until bar 12 is very similar to the second phrase with some minor differences. The left hand melody we now end with a crotchet F and dotted minimum D, so that is one beat and three beats respectively, so we no longer need to play the F fast like in the second phrase and the D note is slightly shorter. So counting in crotchets, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, one, two, three, four. The second thing is that the accompaniment changes slightly towards the end. Instead of this that we've been playing for the last two times, we now start off the little phrase with the third finger, and then in bar 12 we get three crotchet accented chords, the D minor, the F minor, and then probably a D minor sixth chord. So counting on crotchets, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the last thing that is different is the dynamics. This time we stay in piano, and then in bar 10 we have a long hairpin until we reach FF, fortissimo or very loud in bar 12. This coinciding with the three accented crotchet chords means that they have to play with some force behind them, so make sure you lean your body a little bit into it so you can press as deeply as you can. Phrase 4 takes the third phrase's idea and takes it even further. Let's start off with the melody first. The upbeat is now two quavers instead of three quavers, again using a crossover or rather a slide under because it's now on the left hand going down. We have the one, three, and then the slide under, just a little bit. When we get to bar 14, we have the B flat minimum, and it is no shorter note in front of it.
The right hand accompaniment is now a third higher. Instead of being on the F and the D, we're now on the A and the F. And after the quaver rest, the two quavers are now an F and A chord. When we get to bar 15, the accompaniment swaps into the left hand. The free quiver upbeats leads us again into the free act and the crotchet chords. This time the left hand is also joining in as well. The right hand is just consistently the A and the F note, while the left hand plays an A note, a C note, and then a B note, giving variation to the chords. This phrase we are in forte, so ever so slightly quieter than the ending of the previous phrase which was in fortissimo, very loud. There are no dynamic markings in here, but remember that the free quaver upbeats on the left hand in bar 15 is the accompaniment, so we want to keep it roughly the same volume as the right hand accompaniment. And we also want to really make the free chord stand out from the accompaniment with the accents. And finally the last phrase, which is also the most different to the rest of the piece. The melody is now on the right hand and the accompaniment is now on the left hand. The last beat of bar 16, the B flat crotchet is still accented while the right hand is playing the two quaver upbeats. The left hand accompaniment has the same rhythm as before, again on the F and A note like the last phrase. Similar to the melody of the left hand from the previous phrase, we start the right hand with the two quaver upbeat, then two semi breathed chords. The first one is the C and the D note, the second one is the B and the D note, and the last chord we have in the minimum a B flat and a D note. Now you notice there is a little line on top of the notes. This is a tenure, meaning that we need to play the notes to its full length. On bar 19, like the previous phrase, the accompaniment is going to switch hands. So going from the left hand, don't forget the B flat that is hanging over from the chord. The right hand rhythm is like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On bar 20, we have a crotchet rest after the quaver rest at the end of bar 19. Then we have two quavers on both the left hand and right hand going in contrary motion. The right hand is going down on the A and F, and then the left hand is going from a C to a C sharp, but there's an extra note on there, the D crotchet, which is also a little bit of staccato as we're lifting off the phrase. Also to note here is that we are in PP, pianissimo, very soft. So we are trying to be as quiet as possible here. So the ending phrase here. And that's the end of the piece. Well, that was the tutorial on the Virginia Hall by Shuhi Rajasaga. This is a very enticing piece with hints of blues in the melodic line and the accompaniment is like Morse code with the repeating notes and the rest. We need to make sure that the accompaniment is quiet and it can face nervousness and suspiciousness. The tune needs to project warmly and we can use a bit of weight from the arm to do that. The dynamics is really important to create the musical narrative and it is a really fun piece to learn how dynamics can create a dramatic climax to the piece. Hopefully that was useful to you, this is the first of the Grade 1 C pieces. Check out the A and pieces that I've already done and the rest of the C pieces in the playlist when they're up. I also have tutorials for the flute and videos on other hobbies so check those out as well if you're interested. Give a like and subscribe if you like what I did here, put a comment down below if you want me to go over anything specific or if you want to share your own tips and tricks with your fellow viewers. I'll see you on the next video on Master of None. Bye!